welcome to this month's q a i am so excited i have got one of my all-time favorites here with us today um and she is with her writing partner celine we have daisy may cooper and celine who um I think they both went to RADA. We're about to find out all of the information, but I have a lot to thank Daisy for, and she's going to find out in a minute. So I'm going to bring them in. Woo! Hi. Oh, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and for hanging out with me today. It's totally amazing. What a, an utter pleasure. <laughs> and Daisy, I have to say my thank yous, another thank you, because when I started watching this country, I've got a teenager and she can be a bit tricky. Oh. And that is the first show that we watched together. It brought us oh. together and we barely laughed so much. It was just amazing. Oh, that's so that lovely. lovely. Oh, you, really, you. you really united mother and daughter through quite, oh. quite a turbulent time. Oh, that's 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 well up. Thank you. <laughs> and hi, Celine. Hi. So tell me a little bit about you two. Talk so, to me, girls. How do you know each other? So we met at RADA, didn't we? In our first year at RADA. Mm -hmm. you'll, know what, you'll know what I'm about to say. When I first met her, I hated her. I she really, like really her enjoys telling <laughs> this story as well. But anyway, um, we just did, we found drama school quite difficult, didn't we? Well, I think the reason we were both there in the first place, because we both came from sort of working class families and that was our way in to the yeah. industry. I certainly wouldn't have had any clue how to go about sort of getting an agent no. or, you know, you yeah. grew up around here in Gloucestershire, I grew up in Hertfordshire, so we weren't really sort of involved in it all that much. So that was our sort of way in, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and then and then it was kind of like we had to kind of hold on throughout i mean it, it, it didn't really suit the classes didn't really suit us did they i mean it was a lot of like shakespeare there was no right. comedy there was no kind of help on writing your own well material. there was no sort of it, it was very much sort of like we're gonna tell you how to act and it was very much focused on the acting side of it so if you did have any of these kind of desires or instincts to kind of widen your net a little bit and try a bit of writing or try a bit of stand up or you know it was it was just sort of sh not even shut down it just wasn't even discussed no, was it? no. You, you just weren't encouraged to kind of own your own ideas and your own talent and and you know creativity i suppose wasn't it yeah and i think uh, and there was no kind of like help with because a lot of I mean as you you know Charlie as an actor like a lot of your work will be te television mm. and I just remember like my first job I, I didn't know who anybody was I didn't know all I'd done was sort of play there was no mm. kind of training on mm. how uh how to be a television actor yeah and yeah. I think that that really you know especially when I came out of RADA that really um uh, uh, was against me with getting auditions even even because I was too big you know in auditions because I was used to doing theatre. Right. Mm -hmm. My god this is so fascinating to me because I've all I was you know, I've spent so much of my life I bang on about this all the time going oh I, I didn't feel validated somehow because I didn't go to drama school. Right yeah. You know, yeah. And it's kind of like oh I don't know enough I should know more I should know more and actually the older I get and the more work I do and the more people I talk to I realised that sometimes people are trying to get back what they had before they went in. Yes. Oh, God. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly I, like. like, I know people do, some people do have really positive experiences. And I think, you know, if if you can sort of look at it from maybe like a technical perspective, I guess it can be quite useful. But I think the most dangerous thing for us is it robbed us of our instincts. Yeah. And it made us distrust our instincts. And... I know personally, and I think for Daisy as well, like just what you just described is exactly the experience we went through. We almost had to go back and think, well, who was I before yeah. I, I was in this place? And what did I find good? And what did I find funny? And what did I find inspiring? Because it was just like trying to fit in a you know, square peg into a round hole, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Did you do this for years? Yeah. Yes, and, and, and I would, if, if it wasn't for the fact that there was like a big showcase with agents at the end of the three years, I would have fucking left in, in the first year, like a, without a shadow of a doubt. Mm. But I, but then, the, yeah, so the, then it was like, did this showcase, we both got taken on, funnily enough, by the same agent. 
Mm. And I was just get you. You got kind of got work, didn't you? As soon as you got out. Yeah, I managed to sort of do you know a few bits of telly and theatre and stuff. But I was, you know, I was based in London, and I think that was the other thing. There was so much emphasis at Rada on working, yeah. and they really didn't prepare you for what it would be like when you weren't working. And I think that that was, oh God, you yeah. know, we had, you know, a lot of famous people went to RADA and, and so we'd have all these very impressive, incredible people coming in. But I think there was one actress who came in and somebody That's asked true. her exactly that question. They asked, so, um, so how, how, how do you, how do you cope when you don't work? And she sort of went, oh, I don't, I don't think, I mean, there was that time in LA, but I had the kids so I just. Right. And it was just sort of like, not even, it, it was almost like a taboo <laughs> to talk yeah. about the fact that you might not work or you might have periods of time where you might not work. And so you were never encouraged then to kind of do something to fill that time, whether it be write your own work or yeah. like, I mean, collaborate with your mates or like it was just all the focus was on get an agent, get jobs. Yeah. It was mad to me because... So many actors spend so much time unemployed and being able to look after our mental health and having a thick skin through that time and not just be validated by the work, but also, like you say, to learn to create. I mean, it's so important. That's why I'm so, you know, impressed by everything you've done. And I can't wait to get into that. Um, before I do, can, before you went to RADA, why acting? Like, how did you both get into it? And what what was the dream when you were younger? Well, I just think, I think... I personally, I think there was just no plan B for either of us. Yeah, because yeah. that's what I mean. You, I think with acting, you, you are, you are, you've either got it or you, or you don't. Mm. I, I would say that I was always very. I, I feel very lucky. My mum, particularly, always sort of supported that. And I remember, you know, when I was at secondary school, a lot of people going, "No, but what are you really going to do? Because that's yeah. not that. Like, that's probably not going. You know." Yeah. And I sort of remember thinking, well. I can't do anything else. No. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's just what I was good at, and it's what it's I exactly got the same. It's what I got yeah. praise for, and it's what I got attention for, and, yeah. and it was that made me feel good. Like you know, I, I just really, really enjoyed it, and I think that you know, I don't know. Maybe I always think it says a lot about actors that we like to pretend to be other people. <laughs> yeah, very you know, yeah. ourselves at all. Yeah. We're all we're absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's pro probably some sort of underlying deep psychological <laughs> issues well. um, but I, yeah. I think as well like I, I before I went to Rada it was always just like I I, I only ever thought of acting like the mm. thought of writing my own stuff was just well, didn't I, even occur yeah. to me at that point but yeah. now funnily enough now that we we write our own stuff yeah I've just had to do like a HBO show Wow. Uh, that I've actually found quite difficult because I haven't I haven't got the control over it that I and I'm just in it as an actor and you don't kind of have the voice that you do when you're mm. a writer performer it's mm. very strange it it's the voice but I feel like it's also being feeling like you are worthy of taking up more space to ask questions to yeah. say when you're not comfortable to say when you think something doesn't quite feel right yeah. it, it's I think as actors, you're so kind of, you, you're always trying to please other people. Grateful. You're just so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, you know, and that was it, rather, I think, a bit as well. Like, you know, there was some stuff going on that looking back wasn't okay, but we were so young and we were so yeah. in that mindset that it was like, you say jump, we say how high. Mm. There was not even a second thought about it. And I think acting can be a bit like that. Oh, my God. And, and when you're on the other side of it, like when we're casting mm. for our show, that, I mean, the chances, I mean, we just said, it, the odds of getting a job even yeah. are so, Slim. I mean, it's so mm. hard because mm. it can just, it, that you're up against so many other people. Mm. And that's the thing that I want people to start, you know, a performers start thinking about writing their own stuff because, yes. like, you, you, number one, there, there is such a, a desperation for talent. Yeah. Um, from broadcasters and they are as desperate if not even more desperate uh, to connect with writer performers because you know there just isn't 
because there's also I think a sort of an authenticity that comes along with that and mm. and and it it it's I found it because this doing am I being unreasonable days was my first experience of it and I, I just found it completely overwhelming and daunting but really empowering it in a way that I'd never felt when I was just acting yeah, yeah. I, I felt like I were disposable. I was being, yeah and, and and always trying to sort of I mean, I have, you know, it wasn't all bad. I did have some really brilliant collaborative experiences with really generous actors and directors, but there's always that pressure to feel like you're fitting into someone else's vision. Yes. And I think that it, I've never felt so creative, not just in the sort of coming up with the characters, coming up with the story, but in the way that you get to collaborate with other people when you're the writer yeah. and creator. You, you get asked more questions, you get involved in more meetings, you get you, yeah. you kind of, you're in the bones of the show yeah. in yeah. a way that you aren't when you're just an actor, yes. you know? Um, and the thing is, as well, you'll never be waiting by the phone because you're creating your own work. I mean, and this conversation important. couldn't come at a better time for me, really. You know, I've been, I think <clears throat> as actors, sometimes you've you you just as brilliant as it is you feel a bit like a puppet and you are like you say you feel totally disposable and also I think terrified you know I was terrified of going oh I've got an idea I didn't have the confidence because that hadn't been nurtured or you know I, I didn't feel sometimes like I had a voice in the last four years over big changes that I've made in my life I've been unafraid to not stay small I'm not going to stay small anymore. I've, I've got some ideas and I'm feeling brave enough to share them, you know, but that's come after years and years of being in the industry. And what we want to do at I Am Pro is really help incubate and nurture this raw talent, people that have got stories to tell and be unafraid to go out there and write the fucking letter, yeah. make the phone call. Oh you know, you've got God, totally. you've got Absolutely. And, and also that there is a place for you in this industry. Mm. I think, I don't know about you, days, but I think especially after leaving, and I did work a bit, but then when the work sort of started to um, die down, and I mean, I had kids quite young as well, so they were sort of juggling that, and I sort of yeah. thought, I just don't belong here. Yeah. People like me don't belong in this industry. Yes. And I feel like that that is that must be such a common thing that people oh, say to themselves. Imposter syndrome. Bullshit. Yes. It's such bullshit, exactly. They're, they're, I think, yes there probably are a certain type of people dominating the industry, but that doesn't mean that there isn't space for people who don't necessarily see themselves represented. Like in a way that the industry needs that even more. You know, we don't need more no. of the same. No, 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 you're so you know, right. We need people, which is exactly what you guys did with this country. It was so, it was a totally different voice. It was a totally different experience that you were, showing people was valid well th this is what i um I, but but also that we've done kind of the same with the, mm. the stuff that we've written but i think what i would say to anybody who's thinking about maybe writing their own stuff all you've got to start with is just writing something that you know yeah just start with writing your own story because nobody will tell that better than you and you are immediately writing you know yourself apart in your own show mm that can only be played by you, no one else. And that is a really great place to start. And, and honestly, to get together a treatment and like a sort of 10 page document, which is the very sort of minimum really that you, you can, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not, you don't have to do loads. That's no, what I'm but saying. It, but you just have to show a bit of potential for a production yeah. company to go, right, let, we'll start developing something with you. So yeah. I just want people to know that they don't have to have the whole fucking six episodes written or the yeah. whole film. And or... it also doesn't have to be 10 pages of solid writing. It can be images that inspire you, music that inspires you, that you think helps paint a picture of the world that you're creating and the world that you see. It's, it doesn't all have to be like Daisy says, like full scripts, no. you know, put on a desk. It's the essence of what you're sort of trying to get across. Well, the, st the stranger things, yeah. um, treatment have you ever seen that never seen it i'd love to yeah. and it's literally it got a commission off the back of just 
most of it is just pictures. Yeah. So they, like from Poltergeist or a lot of 80s pictures. Like horror. And like, a lot of emotive sort of and language. And colours. And, but it's you know, the most yeah. simple document you'll ever see. But you, you just you look at it and go, yeah, I, I would want to watch this. Wow. So it's It can be, it can be mm. so simple. Mm. I mean, that is the best advice. And, and that's, you know, what I, I don't consider myself a writer at all, but I'm trying, I've partnered with one and it's write what you know. And I've been going through some stuff and I felt very alone in what I was going through. And I was like, write this shit down, write it down, write it down, take it to someone. And, and that's how, it, that's how it starts. So is that what, before we go on, is it, I should have done this at the beginning. Is there any way we can turn your computer around just so I can see your faces better? Oh yeah, we're going to go to the other side. Is that all right? I should have done that before. My brother, who's my partner, was like. Lucy's living room is really big, so I have to find a plug that I could stretch my <laughs> charger to. Oh, I can see you. Yeah, there we go. And also, Daisy doesn't want light directly on her face. <laughs> Let me just get a performance on No, I'm fine with my diet coat, thank you. That, oh, um, now I can see you. There you are. Just tell Charlie about how it was weird because when I came out of the room, I wasn't getting the problem. Then it seemed as you were. Mm. The role was just split. But that's what was, that's what was really interesting because I did, I did work, I did sort of stage plays, did a couple of telly jobs and stuff. I think the thing that really, you know, when things started to get difficult for me, which is horrible, was when I got pregnant. So I got pregnant yeah. when I was 23 and I'd only been out of drums for a couple of years. And it was, you know, I had, my agent was very supportive and I was still going for auditions and things, but it was, you know, it, it was just so difficult, especially then after having the kids and stuff, it was, it, it's not an industry that's supportive of, parents in general let alone you know yeah. if you are just sort of starting out your career it's not like I could sort of bring a nanny on set or anything like I was just you know still kind of going from job to job and I, I definitely did like find that I was in this space very similar to when Daisy first came out of Rada where you know you just and it's so difficult when you when you get on a bit of a streak with not getting jobs yeah it's so difficult to change your mindset you very yeah. quickly or I found that I very quickly sort of got into this kind of oh I probably won't get it and 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 that and then you sort of that you, you make that your reality um and I think that it's so it, it can be so sort of destructive which is why you know Daisy obviously with Charlie initially I think having that sort of urge to create something is such a sort of it, it it's such a positive force. And I think that I was, when we were first making Abu, I hadn't worked for pretty much years at that point. We were in lockdown and I was just sort of thinking, right, that's my career done. I'm probably never gonna work again. And Daisy saying, well, we should write something. And my initial instinct was, no, 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 I can't do that. Yeah, no. you were terrified. And, and I think it, you know, but then actually you get to that point where you just think, I've got nothing else to lose. Yeah. and what is so intimidating about it? What is so frightening about it? Why don't I just go for it? You know, and I think it's interesting. We probably, we obviously had that experience. You guys must have felt like that. Oh God. Oh yeah. But it, cause it was just like, well, this is going to be our only option. Mm. And I think uh, this is so difficult. I mean, it didn't, I mean, I kind of wish that we'd come up with it and bypass, I bypassed fucking drama school, but I, I, mm. I don't regret that because I met you, but. It's the, interesting. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily encourage someone to go to drama school, but then it is really difficult if if you don't have a way into the industry. It's you know. like chicken and the egg. Yeah. But and now we've got I am pro girls, you see, and that is what we are here to change. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. I even um, with writing, I would say it, there's such like, because I remember just thinking like how I remember seeing the BBC and it just felt like this massive kind of, castle that you mm. had to sort of break into and mm. like get noticed but it is actually quite simple and I think if you're writing stuff there's like I would there be like a few steps that I would say to do I'd say take yourself off for a weekend either on your own or with somebody mm. and just start writing about something that you know about your life or 
one of the biggest problems I think is people will say, oh, I tell you what, we'll set it in an airport because that would be funny. Don't ever think of the place first. <clears throat> think yeah. of the characters because yeah. the characters will drive it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so don't think, oh, I've got to be, the, the setting has to be funny or the workplace has yeah. to be, it, don't, don't, uh, that should be like the second mm. thing. Mm. Then I would, yeah, write a treatment. Which is I will will send you an example to yeah. up on the website that what we did. It was literally a page. We did it over a weekend, didn't we? We, did. we you know we got a commission over the weekend. It was insane. It was insane. But right. I think also it it those are really great practical steps. But I think even that can sometimes feel a bit daunting. And I when I think back and how when we started, am I being unreasonable? It realistically it came from us chatting on the phone in lockdown, going, God. I feel like this, you feel like this, mm. I'm going through this, I'm going, and, and it was like, we were, we were mirroring what was going on in each other's lives, and it grew out of that, you know, so it, it grew out of our experience and our personal lives and what was happening to yeah. us at that time, and I think, I, I personally really feel like I work so much better when I'm collaborating with someone else, because I think I'm so self-critical, Sometimes the ideas don't even make it out of my head because I think, no, that's shit, you can't do that. Yeah. And I, yeah. if you, even if it's not someone you end up writing with, no, if it's yeah. someone you trust and you can just kind of air your thoughts and get them out there and get them out in the open, like just get into a safe place, whether it's your mate's house or you go somewhere for a weekend or and just chat it through. I think yeah. that that's what helped me so much as well because I would find sitting down at a computer writing something just yeah. terrible. Yeah, you no, know? I'd agree with that. Um, so am I being unreasonable? That's to show that you two are creating together? Yes, yeah, so that that's BBC One that's coming out next. Yeah, it was supposed to be on Friday. Friday, but next Friday. Week, so it's next out. Friday now. Oof, I can't on. wait for that, that's exciting. Yeah. And yeah. the characters, did you draw from yourselves? Are they, like, how autobiographical is it? Or have you gone all out fictional? Or do you take elements of who you are and put it in? Oh, I mean, a little bit of all those things. I mean, they definitely start with us. Yes, yes. Because we've got to cast ourselves in it, so... <laughs> There's got to be a big element of us in it. Yeah. Uh, that that's a tip that I would I would always say. Um, and then we it was weird. It's so weird. It's like, do you remember the film uh, Slumdog Millionaire? Yeah. Where like all these things that happened to him in his life, or uh, culminate into him getting those quiz questions right. Yes. And that's kind of what happened. It's like all these different like something that you'll hear on the radio, a story that's happened to something else. And you're just, or, something, or a documentary you watch, or an article that you mm. read, or something that's happened to your mum's friend, and you take all these kind of different elements, but because they're all truthful, yeah. they all sit in reality, mm. you know that they'll, they'll work. Yeah. And then, that, and then once you've kind of put that puzzle together of what your kind of story yeah. is from all these different elements, um, that's when you start, you know, you can start pushing it shaping that like green lights just like little green lights start happening everywhere don't they and yeah that's the only way I can describe no that's really because that is what what we do as well and I think kind of not um I, I think it's great to watch you know if, if you whether you want to write a comedy or drama or a film I think it's obviously great to watch a lot of a lot of stuff but I think sometimes if you sort of broaden your kind of horizons a little bit you can you find a lot of inspiration in sort of really random places oh, and I think that you know I think that's what we found a lot as well we just sort of watched a lot of documentaries a lot of documentaries we? but also just lots of <laughs> stupid stuff on <laughs> YouTube and stuff you know procrastinating just like, well it, yeah it is procrastinating but then it also is kind of <laughs> I think I think what I'm getting at is like don't feel like it's I wouldn't sort of ever approach it like homework because no. I feel like that sort of kills the, yes, the oh, creativity. Totally, totally. I think if you feel like I'm going to sit, force myself to write, it's never yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. I think you go, right, I'm just going to go on TikTok for five minutes. Yeah. Sit, you know, like <laughs> there's never five minutes, but I, I wouldn't beat yourself up about that because actually yes. sometimes you've got to just sort of 
let go a bit to get oh into my that God. zone. I, I, but something bizarrely will then inspire you to yeah. write. So it might be a TikTok video about somebody talking about their worst date, and you'll go, God, wouldn't that? Yeah. The guy yeah. she's describing in that be a great character for yeah. this, and yeah. we can bring them in. And that's the way to do it. It's, yeah. No, it's really fun doing that. Yeah. Sometimes in that procrastination, though, if we can just, like you say, let it go and just trust that it will happen. And the more you do it, I think the more you're able to trust that process. Mm -hmm. And then ideas might come to you. I think it's Elizabeth um, Gilbert that's like, uh, you've got to catch it by the tail. Something will come inspired by something, just get it down in that moment. And, and so I do try not to beat myself up if I'm just laying on the sofa. Flicking oh, what, what were you saying yesterday? That oh, it's it's like Steven King? It, yes, yeah. it's already exists. The, the, the idea you've got to, kind of chisel down and, 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 layer by yeah, layer. and find it it's like a fossil but you've got to trust that it's there yes yeah I, I, but I really feel that that happened with Harry Potter and JK Rowling because it all came to her when she was sat on, on the train and it, I think all these ideas actually already exist in the ether it's just mm. connecting to it so it's not like mm. you'll know when it when it feels right you won't be able to to it will keep going yeah, and yeah. you will know when something feels wrong about it. You just mm, have to really mm. trust your instincts. So with this country, Daisy, how did that come about? Was your Did your brother go to drama school as well? No, I, I was I was at drama school. I was really homesick. He got kicked out of Exeter University and came to sort of live on my floor with me. Yeah. Um, because I just needed him because I was just so alone. And then... It started by we um because we were so homesick, our mum would send us like our local paper and we'd start reading that and that's where it came. It was like all these characters that were in like the court section. <laughs> we'd be like, Oh, that's what how we got done for shoplifting and blah blah blah. And that and that's how the, the characters kind of came, but from a local newspaper. Wow. And then, and yeah. you and you just sat down together, you and him, and started writing it, and then, and then just reached out to somebody at the BBC. Well, no, we we made some small YouTube videos. I went to my agent at the time and said, "Look, I've come up with this idea for this comedy," and she completely fucking dismissed it. I mean, she I think she even forgot that she represented me at one point. It was that bad. Oh God! And I was so desperate that we wrote, like I said, 10 pages of dialogue and a treatment, just a one page treatment. And I looked up every single production company in the UK, found their email addresses and sent it to everybody. So just on Google, mm. so anybody can do this. And then got a reply, but literally sent like, you know, one of those big emails, it's just, and, and the thing is a lot of production companies say, look, we don't accept unsolicited we won't read unsolicited material they fucking do because they're worried that they're not going to find they don't want to miss, miss anything the, you they know, don't want to miss the next yeah yeah uh, game of thrones or whatever they're yeah. terrified so of course it, it just it's it means they say that because if it's shit it means that they don't have to reply to right. you were you about worried it. about were you worried about people stealing your idea like how do you yeah, manage that, that? It doesn't you've got all you have to do is send send yourself an email if you've got a, like an email, like a like a receipt, like you've got the history. Yeah. Of the email. If yeah. you've got any, if you yeah. just send it to yourself via email, that's yeah. all, all you have to do to cover your ass. But so that's one of the things that so many people ask me about: Are you worried that people are going to steal your ideas? Mm -hmm. That shouldn't even be a fucking concern. Your concern is getting, you know, getting there. Mm -hmm. And don't mm -hmm. be so married to your idea, mm -hmm. like. Don't be so precious about your idea. Because yeah. there's there's stuff where I mean, for example, I mean, in the pilot, I didn't know this was the pilot. In the what? The sound is funny. The, the sound's gone a bit funny, hasn't it? Yes, it might be because I put my book on there. I've taken it off again. Happy <laughs> <laughs> <be> my fault. <laughs> technical issues. So Celine actually was cast as a character called Tracy Chambers in the original This Country pilot. Yeah. And it was a great character. It was like the arch nemesis of Kerry just didn't work. When, when, when it was we, a totally different show, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Like, yeah. And it sort of made you lack empathy for Kerry, weirdly, 
and we were so married to that character, but we had to let it, you know, had to let it go. That meant that I couldn't face you for like five years. <laughs> yeah, that, must have been, that must have been really tough. How did you manage that? It was, well, Daisy just ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't I'm terrible. I'm terrible. No, but I'm I think I, I, I'm, I'm really quite similar like that as well. And I think ha had it been the other way around, I probably would have done the same thing. Because I think especially, and it's interesting because when this country came out, the first series, that's when things were really starting to drop off for me. So again, it was this weird sort of like, you know, that we were kind of mirroring each other's lives, but at different points. And um, mm. obviously it was it was shit, but I think it was it was worse because I wasn't working very much. Yeah, but I think I I understood it as well. And I, you know, and I wrote Daisy a big email because I thought I could just leave it, but I really missed her as well. And it was, I mean, it was really funny because I was just spending so long trying to get in touch with her. And I, I'd call up the house and her mum would be like, oh, she, you just missed her. She just, just <laughs> this going. minute walked out the door. Um, can you call back next week? Like, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Terrible. But I sort of, I did really <sighs> miss her. And, and also I was really proud of her because, you know, I think, Everything with am I being unreasonable happened quite quickly. I was gonna say, I hope it made it, was, it in. It was oh. <laughs> well, it was a real it was a long time coming for you. And I think that I was just so relieved for you and I was so happy for you. And you know, so I wrote her this big email. I did tell her that like I that's fucking shit. I was completely honest, but I just said, Oh, I just missed you as well. Yeah. And you know, um, and then you know, Daisy wrote straight back, and I think like that's the other thing. I think because we felt like such outsiders in the industry, I think I, I know that Daisy would have wanted me there if there was any way to make it happen. But you also just sort of know that there's kind of, you know, you're a few rungs down the ladder and, and it's, it, I, it, was, it wasn't your decision as well. No. You know, you couldn't have said it. No, I'm putting my foot down because no, this was no. your first yeah, you know. thing. And you're so scared of, you know, mm -hmm. Somebody going, yeah. oh, well, if you're going to be difficult, then fuck it, yeah, we'll just yeah. drop the whole thing. Yeah. Well, there is... But weirdly, it's made it now. I was talking about this the other day with someone. Having that experience, I think when we were then creating AVU together, it was like, you know, you don't owe me anything. Let's just make this for the joy of making yeah. it, you know? And I think because we've gone through that experience, we were able to be honest with each yes. other. Well, yes. In a way that I'm not sure we would have been able to before because maybe we would have been afraid of something like that happening but something but that had happened and we yes, got through it we, and we've it was, got through it we're know. still here yeah it's weird it's but but i i feel that this all had to happen yeah for us to i mean it, the universe is unfolding fucking perfectly and this is what what had to yeah mm. where, where we had to get to definitely but, well, uh, the biggest growth happens, doesn't it, when you go through those really difficult situations and um, and being able to trust that it will turn out as it should, you know, and what is for you won't go by you, I think, is is really brilliant. Mostly, because uh, then, then there's a, the, the, the pressure's off then. You can at least breathe then. Yeah. 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 And not panic. And, and touching on what you said as well, it's not attaching to the outcome. It's just really enjoying the process and the journey. Yeah, in. And I think, you know, going back to the whole drama school conversation, yes, it it robbed us of our instincts, but it robbed us of the joy of it. Yeah. It turned mm -hmm. it into something to worry about rather yes. than this is fucking fun and this is why I do this and this makes yeah. me feel great. And I think, you know, it's the minute you put that, pressure on yourself to be something you're not sound like someone different look like someone different behave like someone different that you just stop having fun yeah and I think that yeah it's got to be fun it's got to be the point you know um are you still both auditioning for parts that you're not writing I am but I'm not the main one so I I just do you know what I've got a couple of things coming up that I'm going to be in but I, I I have done stuff before there was a comedy that I did after this country that I was in and it went against all my gut instincts and I just knew it wasn't right and I didn't have any control 
and I'm now I'm it, it has to be something that I really 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 love mm. I need to do it like fuck the money money doesn't matter it's mm. so important to me now I, I, you'll, I think once you start writing your own <clears throat> stuff you'll realize um it, it to then go go to to not having the control it, it within a show is is, is mm. difficult I, I think also what I because I definitely am still you know oh, self tape hell. <laughs> I know. I, I think it. One of the most frustrating things about it is, I mean, self tapes are horrible. I think mainly because you can't ask questions and you can't have a conversation about the character. So it's like you know, going in with a blindfold on. You you know yes okay you've got to trust your instincts but you know you get zero feedback. So how are you supposed to kind of know whether you need to adjust something or, you know, so. Well, I loved self-taping because I could literally sellotape the lines to the wall. Yeah, how many do you think you've actually done? <laughs> at, this point, <laughs> at this point, I've done <laughs> 85, if not 100, and they are just the worst thing, I think. But I mean, maybe, maybe. Well, you know. I, no, but I, I'm so lazy and <laughs> I can't, I can't learn lines very well. So I, for me, it's brilliant because I can just hide like the lines an auto behind, behind the camera, <laughs> stick yeah. to the wall. Yeah. Without no. mentioning any names, yeah. or without mentioning any names, there was someone I worked with on, on set in EastEnders and in a really important scene, <laughs> someone was dying. There were post-it, yellow post-it notes with all the lights up, like that is in drawers. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. That is brilliant. She, she'd do that. If she no, I did that. do it to Tim Key. He, <laughs> he had a whole speech of mine, sellotaped his chest. <laughs> <laughs> really great. That's that's why we wanted all of our oh. shows to improvise, so Daisy didn't have to learn any lines. Yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's improvised. It's is not... It all- in not all of it, but we, most of it. I'd say most. Well, we of it we is. wanted there to, it just to be fully improvised, and we had a very sort of detailed framework of the script. But it just logistically became very very difficult, and because yeah, you know, it's a BBC comedy. It wasn't a months long rehearsal period with a months long shoot like if you're doing a Mike Lee film or something like that. So it just logistically became a bit difficult. So we did have scripts, but we really encouraged improvising around yeah. the script and anything that didn't feel right for an actor if they felt like oh I wouldn't say that or maybe I maybe this would be funny or just giving giving people that bit of freedom that bit of sort of agency to kind of go I've got ideas I can contribute and you know like like Lenny in our show who, who plays um Daisy's son in the show he and I think he's a really important example of just remembering to enjoy yourself because he really flew with all the improv. And I think sometimes with, with child actors especially, it can be intimidating for them and it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, but I think the minute he sort of heard oh, that he could, he could improv, he was just like, oh, great, this is, you know. And, and it's sort of liberating and, you know, there would be certain plot points you've got to hit and stuff, but. I think I'd shit myself doing improvisation. Say that think- again? I think I'd chip myself doing improvisation. I think I'd be really scared because I'm so no, used to- no, no, you'll lo- you'd love it. I, you I, I, I totally get mm. where you're coming from. Because like we had an improvisation class at RADA and it really was just everyone trying to be funny. Yeah. And it was mm. so competitive and it was so weird. But I think if you we did have rehearsals, we did have a week of rehearsals at the beginning of our um project, and I think the main job in that rehearsals was to make everyone feel safe around each other and yeah. comfortable around each other. So I think if you trust each other, I think, yeah, I mean, when you think about like a theatre above a pub where everyone's picking a topic out of a hat and having to make a scene, I mean, that is the stuff of nightmares. Oh, I could never do that. But, you know. But we, um, we, we work with um, a, in, oh, an acting coach called mm. Miranda Harcourt who um, is Nicole Kidman's acting coach. And what, her, she worked on this country as well. Mm. So a lot of, because uh, we had a lot of non-actors in this country and it's, the work was more about creating chemistry and backstories like between characters. So there was this amazing story that she told us about one boy had to do a speech in this film where he talked about going to his dad's, his estranged father's house 
and saying, look, I've, I've found you. Um, uh, I, I really want to have a relationship. And the dad just gives him like 10 pounds and shuts the door and says, please don't come back here again. Mm. And so she got that actor. She gave him a map of where like the dad's house was. So he had to go and find that on his own. And then she got another actor to open the door and give the 10 pounds. And then, so anyway, when he's telling that speech, because he's already lived that, he's, if a psychologist was to watch his performance, they'd go, he's telling the truth because you can see he's that the actor is remembering memory. and finding the memories. And it's like those, like, small things mm. make such a massive difference when you're on screen because mm. it's the small things. Yeah. Speak volumes. It's amazing. It's amazing. That's and it, and there's, a, there's a parallel with that about you saying, write what you know, because also a lot of what Miranda does is she gets you to talk about your own experience yeah. or an experience in your life that, you know, is parallel to maybe something your character's gone through because it gives you that ownership. It gives you that authenticity and, and the self-belief to go, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. And this, yeah. and this is the thing she helped us with the um, improvisation because she would set, use the, the fact fiction sandwich. So say, for example, we're doing an improv where it's just me and you having a cup of tea. Mm. And my character's talking about a time, I don't know, where I went out for lunch and I got a sandwich. So me as Daisy will incorporate something that I've done to go and, mm. do you get what I mean? Mm. To put into that conversation. So you're falling back on yourself. So you've always got that support. Yeah. You're yeah. not just coming up with stuff out of the blue. Mm. And um, that, and, sorry, yes, but that, no, go on. auditioning for yeah. sort of other people's writing, that's why... I, I, some, sometimes you have an instinct for a character and, and you do you do trust yourself, but sometimes I think it, it's such a different experience for me now auditioning for other people's characters, having played a character that I've written myself. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a level of ownership and confidence and, and sort of security that it yeah. gives you that it's so difficult to get if you're not, if, if it's not a conversation, if it's not, a, you know, when we were yeah. doing it's like any actor who's playing a character has a question, yeah, let's talk about yeah, it. Let's, yeah. let, you know, it's a collaboration. And I think yeah. that, yeah, so it's... Yeah, you have to have ownership. Every actor should have ownership of, or yeah. be able to, be allowed to bring something of themselves yeah. to that character because it's going to make the show better. Yeah, and yeah. That's, that's another thing Miranda will do. She'll encourage people to... You know, like with um, your your house in Am I Being Unreasonable? She encouraged you to bring stuff from your house to make to to put in, put in you know, and maybe or a bit of costume or a bit of something that can like anchor you yeah. to yourself and you know know where the fridge is, know how to stack the dishwasher in the in the set. You know, it's all that sounds wanky and pretentious, but it's. It's not really, it's it's just, it's giving another level to it. That's, mm, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. So with, much. The, with the audition process for ABU, when you were bringing other people in, were you both in on the audition process and were they asked to, the actors asked to improvise? Yes. It was How still a bit work? Work because it was still, there were still a lot of COVID restrictions. So um, we... We did it over Zoom. We, we did a lot of it. We Zoom. did a lot of improv over Zoom. Yeah, especially with the kids. We yeah. did a lot of improv over Zoom. We had a few in-person auditions, but really we weren't allowed to have very many. So yeah, we did a lot of it over Zoom, yeah. didn't we? Which wasn't like obviously ideal, but um, you know, it was really important to us to see how how yeah. you know, we connect with people, you know. It's all about yeah. I'm well aware that we're 43 minutes in. Um, just a couple more questions, then I'm just I'll let you go till Sunday. Um, what can either of you think of the best note that you've ever had? Um there have been one note you've oh, got. Uh, uh, just uh, what was it? Don't don't tell the story. Don't, don't let your character know. tell the story, I think. Because you can because yeah. you can know what's gonna come up. And you can be trying to help the audience by telling it. Just sit within it. And yeah, be in yeah, it. yeah. What have you got? The little ones there. Yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry. That is a really good one. Yeah. Um, I think also like uh, 
somebody said to me, I think I was very nervous doing a job once, and they said, you've got the, you've got the part, the hard bit's over. So I think like, trust, trust the casting, trust yeah, yeah. that, you know, I think there's a, there's a, a, a kind of tendency to kind of still push and still want to make yourself um, kind of, you know, please people and do the right yeah. thing. Relax yeah. into it. You've got the job. You're right for the job. Trust that you're right for it. Trust the casting and just sit in it. Yeah. Somebody said to me once, so it's a good note that I always try and share is do less. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like there's such power in stillness sometimes, isn't there? And yeah, yeah. Um, and who has inspired you both? Daisy. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, Any inspirations or? Oh, I struggle um, with this one as well. I've got to be oh, honest. I was a massive like Caroline Hearn fan. Yeah, and and just loved the royal family, and that was so mm. different. That was so groundbreaking that show. Um, and I think we do get quite a lot of inspiration from our stuff, like you know the, the sitting in something and leaving those yeah. pauses and leaving yeah. that you know stuff to kind of settle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. All right, thank you. I'm going to leave you two to it. Thank you so much. But yeah, we'll we'll send yes. that um, treat. I and mean, I'll write you a thing of we'll write a thing of how to get like, practical steps, step by step. Yeah, of how to get into the industry over as a former writer. Mm. I mean, we could do it in a masterclass maybe next year. Perfect. That sounds <laughs> brilliant. That's we'll have you both on. Thank uh, with you. Us. All right, darling. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Celine. Lots of love, girls. Bye. Bye. Bye.